Hello friends, I am Rob Rodriguez from El Salvador. This time I want to share with you how we perform the ultrasonographic evaluation of the abdominal wall at our hospital. We carry out the review in 10 points, ensuring a comprehensive assessment of the anterior abdominal wall. In step 1 and 2, we evaluate the upper abdomen at subsifoid area. Scan the right rectus abdominal muscle in its entirety. Measure, if possible, the width of the right rectus abdominal muscle, cross the midline, and then advance towards the left rectus abdominal muscle, which we measure in the same manner. In step 3, we measure the midline at the level of the epigastrium and subsifoid area. For an accurate evaluation, we locate the right rectus abdominal muscle, identify its medial border, then the medial border of the left rectus abdominal muscle. And finally, measure the midline to rule out diastasis. An extension of the step 3 is tracing the midline cavity to rule out hernias. If we lose the border of the linea alba during this tracing, we relocate the medial border of the right or left rectus abdominis muscle. In steps 4 and 5, we analyze the rectus abdominal muscle at the umbilicus area and measure the width of these muscles as this level. Measure the right and left rectus abdominal muscle at this level. In step 6, we assess the umbilical area. Trace the abdominal wall from the medial border of the right rectus abdominal muscle to the left rectus abdominal muscle. And finally, position ourselves at the umbilical scar, performing maneuvers to rule out hernias at this level. We also measure the midline to rule out rectus diastasis at this level. In step 7, we locate at the right rectus abdominal muscle at the umbilical level and decide to move laterally to identify the muscle of the lateral abdominal wall. Here, we measure the thickness of the subcutaneous fat, the thickness of the muscle package. This can help us to decide the amount of bottling toxin to use. Evaluate change in thickness due to bottling toxin. Measure the distance from the skin to the transverse abdominal muscle. And finally, measure the distance from the skin to the transverse plane, which is another method we frequently use to apply tap block for postoperative analgesia. In step 8, we position ourselves on the left side of the abdominal wall and locate the left rectus abdominal muscle. We then move laterally to identify the muscle of the lateral abdominal complex like we can see here. In this video, we can see how the transverse abdominal muscle extends posteriorly from the rectus abdominal muscle.
we can see the semilunar line. The clearly identification of the muscle of the lateral abdominal wall. Here we can take the same measure of the subcutaneous fat, thickness of the lateral muscle, distance from the skin to the transverse muscle, and distance from the skin to the transverse plane. In step 9, we evaluate the right inguinal area, locate the right rectus abdominal muscle, move caudally and laterally to identify the epicastric vessels. We have to perform different maneuvers to identify the epigastric vessels posteriorly to the rectus abdominal muscle. If we use Doppler color, it's easy to see the epigastric vessels. Another structure that we have to see are the femoral vessels. In this point, we ask the patient to perform balsaba maneuver to identify hernias in the inguinal area. In step 10, we repeat what we did in step 9, locate the left rectus abdominis muscle, move caudally and laterally to identify the epigastric vessels. Like we can see here. Posterior to the rectus abdominal muscle. And if we use Doppler color, it's easy to see the epigastric vessels. And we have to identify the femoral vessels to identify hernias in this level. With this systematic evaluation, we can diagnose hernias, assess reducibility, plan surgical approaches, manage intraoperative care, make differential diagnosis, evaluate complication, and assess recurrence. Thank you very much.